welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tales of Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrose, and today's episode is episode number 185. And if this is your first time hearing this podcast, please be sure to subscribe wherever it is that you are listening. This way, you get all new episodes every time they come out, every Wednesday and Sunday. And just one little order of housekeeping here. Please be on the lookout over the next few days for the new Tales of Honor podcast website. I spent a good chunk of time today making sure that it was all put together and uh, revamped, if you will. So I'm waiting for a few things to transfer over, and then once that's good to go, you'll be able to read these stories and listen to them all on the website, as well as purchase the Tales of Honor podcast t-shirt and be connected with all the social media links. And now, a Tale of Honor. John was born on the 4th of November, 1916, in Buffalo, New York, to an Italian family with ten children. John's five older siblings were born in Raritan, New Jersey, before the family moved to Buffalo, and when John was born, the family moved back to Raritan. He went to St. Bernard Parochial School, and once John completed middle school, he dropped out of school and went to work as a golf caddy at a local country club. In June of 1934, John enlisted in the U.S. Army at the age of 17 and was assigned to the 16th Infantry Division at Fort J., New York. During his three-year enlistment, he spent time in the Philippines, and once released from active duty, John went home and drove truck in Maryland. Eventually, John wanted to return to the Philippines, and he thought that he could get there faster by joining the Marine Corps, which he did in 1940. John went to recruit training at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Paris Island, and additional training at Quantico and New River. He was sent to Guantanamo Bay, and then Guadalcanal with Company D, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, 1st Marine Division. It was his actions during the battle for Henderson Field that would earn him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, For extraordinary heroism and conspicuous gallantry in the action against enemy Japanese forces above and beyond the call of duty while serving with the 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, 1st Marine Division in the Laguna area, Guadalcanal, Solomon Islands on 24 and 25 October 1942. While the enemy was hammering at the Marines' defensive positions, Sergeant Bazalone, in charge of two sections of heavy machine guns, fought valiantly to check the savage and determined assault. In a fierce frontal attack with the Japanese blasting his guns with grenades and mortar fire, one of Sergeant Bazalone's sections with its gun crews was put out of action, leaving only two men able to carry on. Moving an extra gun into position, he placed it in action, then, under continual fire, repaired another and personally manned it, gallantly holding his line until replacements arrived. A little later, with ammunition critically low and the supply lines cut off, Sergeant Bazalone, at great risk of his life and in the face of continued enemy attack, battled his way through hostile lines with urgently needed shells for his gunners, thereby contributing in large measure to the virtual annihilation of a Japanese regiment. His great personal valor and courageous initiative were in keeping with the highest traditions of the U.S. Naval Service. Not mentioned in the citation was when the last of the ammunition ran out, just before dawn on the second day, John used his pistol and machete to hold off the Japanese soldiers that were attacking his position. He received the Medal of Honor from Major General Alexander Vandegrift, who would also receive the Medal of Honor for his actions in Guadalcanal. Shortly after, John was sent home to the States to go on a war bonds tour to help raise money for the war effort. He received a homecoming parade on the 19th of September, 1943, which made national press. John became a celebrity as he toured around the country, but the fame wasn't what he wanted, and soon he requested to return to the fight. His request was denied because he was seen as a bigger asset at home, and he was even offered a commission, but he turned it down. Another request was finally granted, and John reported to Camp Pendleton in California on the 27th of December. He re-enlisted the following July, and while stationed at Pendleton, he met Lena May Rigi. She was a sergeant in the Marine Corps Women's Reserve, and they married on the 10th of July, 1944. After their honeymoon on an onion farm in Portland, Oregon, John was assigned to Company C, 1st Battalion, 27th Marine Regiment, 5th Marine Division. 
They were part of the invasion of Iwo Jima on the 19th of February, 1945. On this day, John was a machine gun section leader on Red Beach 2, and he single-handedly destroyed an entire enemy strongpoint and its defending garrison with grenades and demolitions. He then aided a marine tank trapped in an enemy minefield on airfield number one, while the enemy sent in mortar and artillery barrages. It was here that he was killed by Japanese mortar shrapnel as he moved along the edge of the airfield. Because of his actions, the Marines were able to get off the landing beach during the invasion. His actions earned him the Navy Cross that day, making him the only Marine to receive both the Medal of Honor and Navy Cross during World War II. This normally is the part where I mention all of the namesakes and honors that were given. However, if I were to write them all out, the list would take up almost an entire page. Roads, landing zones, ships, homes, schools, bridges, and libraries all bear his name. Part of his story was shown during the HBO miniseries The Pacific in 2010. His wife, Lena, never remarried, and she died on the 11th of June, 1999, at the age of 86. And John Francis Bazalone is buried in Arlington National Cemetery, Section 12, Grave 384. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you very much for listening to Tales of Honor Podcast. Please head on over to talesofhonorpodcast.com for more information and other ways to listen and support the podcast. And please be sure to leave a good rating and a nice review wherever it is that you are listening. Also, please keep an eye out for the new talesofhonorpodcast.com that is coming out shortly. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening.